In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I sometimes wonder when I'm watching the news or reading the newspaper how it is decided what gets broadcast or written about. What is it we want to know? Or what is it that the editors, journalists, think we ought to know? Some decisions seem pretty obvious. For the last two years, COVID, health, safety, and all the ways our lives have been affected. And for the last few months, Ukraine. This week, the fires in Laguna Niguel, nearby, causing a great deal of damage and heartbreaking. But other things, what is it that makes something important enough to capture our attention? Politics, how we live out our lives in this city, this nation, this world. Crime, the horrific things that happen, the anguish of those touched by it. Sports, our identity with those playing, amazement at all they do. Celebrities, what is it about them that attracts us? Beauty, money, their power, the ins and outs of their lives? What makes someone a celebrity worthy of news coverage? It can all be overwhelming, all that is going on, enough so that we have to take a break from watching or reading or listening. But I love that one of the news channels ends their daily broadcast with, there's good news tonight. A human interest story showcasing a person who's reaching out and doing something good. A reminder that there is good news. It's not all catastrophic and horrible. And what about you? What if Lester Holt or Nora O'Donnell showed up on your doorstep and wanted to interview you for a special on the news tonight? What is it that you would want the world to know about you? What would catch our attention? Or what would be important for us to know? Jesus said to his disciples, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. On one level, it sounds simple. Have love for one another. Love your neighbor. Love yourself, love your enemy, love your spouse, love your friend, love your mail carrier, your lawyer, love everyone, just love. Now some of that may be harder than other parts, right? Like love your enemy. But the overall gist, love, that's something we can affirm. Love is the answer. That would not be a bad thing for Lester or Nora to say about you. You are a person who loves. But what does that look like? Jesus told his disciples to love one another as he has loved them. How could they and we possibly do that? That's way beyond anything we could do. But Jesus gave that commandment to his disciples, knowing who they were. In the lesson we read today, the disciples are gathered with Jesus at the Last Supper. Judas has just left to betray Jesus. Jesus spoke to his disciples. They didn't get it. They didn't understand who Jesus was or what was going to happen. They were about to run away and desert Jesus. Clearly, they were not perfect. Love one another as I have loved you. Maybe that's the starting point. We are loved. The world looks different when you know you are loved. It opens more doors, makes more things possible, gives us strength and compassion. We are God's beloved, not of our own doing, but of God's. We are God's beloved, and we are to love one another as Jesus loves us. What kind of love is that? Jesus loved his disciples selflessly. It's hard for us to be entirely selfless. When we love, there is some degree of thinking, maybe unconsciously, of what we are to get. We think of the happiness we will receive, or the loneliness we will suffer if this love fails or is denied. All of which is true and quite human. The love Jesus showed was selfless. He chose to give himself and all he had 
for those he loved. Jesus loved his disciples sacrificially. There was no limit to what his love would give. No command could be too great. If love meant the cross, Jesus was willing to go there. Sometimes we think that love is meant to give us happiness, and well it may, but it also may be may bring pain and demand a cross. I think of those caring for a loved one who is ill, or seeing the pictures of the horrors in Ukraine. Love can be costly. Jesus loved his disciples understandingly. He knew his disciples through and through. It's like getting to know someone. When we are meeting them only occasionally, we may see them at their best. It is when we live with them that we found, find out their foibles, the things that irritate them, how they act when they are tired. Jesus had lived with his disciples day in and day out for many months and knew who they were, and still he loved them. Real love is open-eyed. It loves not what, imagine, what it imagines people to be, but what they are. The heart of Jesus is big enough to love us as we are. Jesus loved his disciples forgivingly. Peter was to deny him. They all were to forsake him in his hour of need. They never really understood him. They were blind and insensitive, slow to learn. But Jesus held nothing against them. There was no failure he could not forgive. The love which has not learned to forgive cannot do anything but shrivel and die. All enduring love must be built on forgiveness, for without forgiveness it is bound to die. Love, thinking of the other, it's not all about me. Willing to give of oneself, willing to see the other as they are, warts and all, and forgiving, seeing beyond that which separates us. Can we strive to love as Jesus loved us? Will others see the love of Jesus when they look at us? One might ask the same question of us corporately. Does the love of Jesus shine through us at St. Michael's? As we plan, as we do the day-to-day -day stuff required to keep the church running, as we study and share and worship together, as we fund car seats for Mom O.C., May we always hold in mind and heart Jesus' words. Love one another as I have loved you. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.